Welcome back to Ferocious Education, this is Ed. Today we are talking about SNDL, Sundial Cannabis, once more. First off, I'm going to be taking a quick focus into the legislation side in the US, a bit off the forecasts and prices, and then technical analysis. So let's jump right into this one. So Sundial Cannabis. I've covered this one multiple times before, my last video is in the description below as if the usual. So one of the latest things includes the buyout from a company called Inner Spirit. And these co this company here has 19 wholly owned corporate retail stores across Ontario, Alberta, and Saskatchewan. Now, the franchise retail operations, they have 67 stores across Ontario, Alberta, British Columbia, Newfoundland, and Saskatchewan. They, around, they have served around 2.3 million guests in 2020 and currently have more than 250,000 members collectively with an increasing historical positive revenue. That's an EBI TDA margins as well included in there up to 19%. Now, the thing that I want to talk about, and I'm not going to go back towards the earnings, etc. I've covered that already before. One of the things I do want to talk about is the MORE Act, and then I'll progress to newer things in a second. So the MORE Act was actually introduced in July 23rd, 2019. The last action was on December 4th, 2020, and it was passed in the House, and the Senate vote was coming in next. Now, it was already considered by Health, and already considered by the Committee on the Judiciary, and the, currently, from my understanding, the last part that it was supposed to go to in the Senate is more off the Treasury part, which Bernie Sanders is also part on there, and as well as uh, others on that committee that are able to take a look into uh, that bill. Now, the next thing that I do want to take a look at is the vote itself. The vote was somewhat bipartisan. Uh, now, this one here was around 222 Democrats saying yes, five Republicans, and one Libertarian. Now, the nays were around 42%. Six Democrats said no, 158 Republicans said no, and none voting were around 38, including four Democrats and 34 Republicans. But one of the most interesting things is a Republican bill is actually out. So this one here, to limit the application of federal laws to distribution and consumption of marijuana and for other purposes, that was by the Republican Representative David Joyce, and he is the Ohio District Republican uh, representative of District 14, 113th to 117th from 2013 until present. Now, the next person as well that is on there is Don Young, which is also a Republican uh, in the House of Alaska for the district at large, 93rd to 117th from the 1973 till present. So that's one of a long lasting person on there. But nonetheless, they co-sponsored uh, this bill, the HR 3105. So now we have an actual Republican bill going in towards limitation of federal laws on cannabis itself. Some other notable as well uh, House bills that are coming in to decriminalize cannabis to establish an equitable license grant program in the Small Business Administration and for other purposes. This is actually as well introduced by a Democrat, Dwight Evans. And we're going to move on as well. There's a lot of different talks about it. Now, in order to give you a bit of perspective on the Republican cannabis bill, I'm going to take, talk, uh, take a clip here. With more than 40 states taking actions on this issue, it's past time for Congress to recognize that the continued cannabis prohibition is neither tentable nor will the American or nor the will of the American electorates, Joyce said the co-chair of the Congressional Cannabis Caucus. Now, they said in a press release, under the proposal, marijuana would be removed from Controlled Substance Act, clearing states to enact legalization. Cannabis could be imported and exported across states through transportation marijuana to states where such activity is unlawful would remain federally prohibited. Two agencies, the FDA and the Alcohol and Tobacco Tax and Trade Bureau, which falls under the Treasury Department, would be responsible for developing regulations for cannabis. Those rules would have to be very similar to federal rules regulating alcohol. Now, the text of the bill states that they would have to be issued within one year of enactments. My bad. 
For too long, the federal government's outdated cannabis policies have stood in the way of both individual liberty and the state of the 10th Amendment's rights, Young said, and also the chair of the CCC said. It is also long past time that these anarchy laws are updated to, for the 21st century. The legalization of marijuana in the United States, and with that comes in, Sundial has enough capital to expand there with ease. Now, some of the institutional buyers, you get to see that May has added a good amount of shares, almost million amount of shares added on in May alone for Suntile. Now, before moving on towards forecast, if you'd like to see more contents like this, make sure to click that subscribe button and turn notifications button on. And if you'd like to see as well this video highlighted, make sure to drop a like and you can join our Discord totally free in the description below. Now, Sundial kind of pro uh, price forecast here. On the median is around 72 cents, on the high $1.44 and in the low 45 cents with three hold analysts uh, review and three sell. We can move on now towards technical analysis. From a technical analysis standpoint of view, what we get to see here on the one week perspective is something that is quite interesting. So the 30 EMA is above the 10 SMA, but that's about to change, which is almost a bullish trigger in a sense. Now, it needs to be confirmed by a one-day movement, but the price point is currently above the 50 SMA on the one-week candles. The current 50 SMA line is at the 70 cents. Now, if we were to look at the MACD, this here is attempting a positive reversal in the next few weeks, which is definitely a positive thing. Now, on a million percent R, what you're seeing here is that it's currently highly oversold which indicates that a lot more people are selling than usual and in a sense a correction would bring more buyers in. Now momentum is picking up from where it was from negative 1.31 to currently to negative 0.58. So it's definitely getting some traction there. Now on the one day perspective, currently the purple line 50 SMA is above the 200 SMA, which is a bullish thing. Now the 10 SMA is above the 30 MA, which is another bullish thing. And the current price point is within the trading action zone, which in its own self is another bullish thing. Now trading action zone is where most positive reversals occur. Now the ADX isn't showing much. Momentum is almost at zero and willing percent R is at overbought in the one day perspective. Now all in all, these moving averages are showing more of a sloppy sideways accumulation movement, which is fine for the given price point, but it, it does feel like a hit in the face or a slap on the wrist that this one here has a lot of fundamentals, a lot of uh, potential, yet isn't seeing much attention. And I'll explain that in a second. Now the stochastic fast and stochastic slow both are coming in towards almost a resistance point there, but there is a very strong potential that they will see another leg up. Now, in terms of the moving average bands, currently on the top, on the Bollinger Bands, it's 93 cents, in the bottom, 64. This one is expected to trade on the top, 86 cents, in the middle, 79 cents, and 71 cents at the bottom for the moving average bands. Now, volume have been a little bit lower than a lot of the volatilities it has received before. Previously, it topped at almost 3 billion shares being traded. Currently, on any given day, it's trading around 150 to 200 million shares a day, which is quite a lot, though. It's around 100 million, almost 200 million dollars a day in traded value. Well, probably 150. But in a sense, you're seeing that it's kind of almost trading sideways. So the question is, what's going on? So for this, let's take a look at key points that the Fibonacci retracements gives us. So on the top comes in 104, which is a resistance currently, 159. 204, 249, 313, and 395. Now, if we were to just go with the price line action, we see a significant support level sitting at the 74 cents. Below there, you're looking at 69 cents. Below there, 48 cents. Below there, you're looking down at 24 cents. Now, resistance levels, and these are some really strong key ones. 83 cents is currently one of the strong resistance level, followed by 91 cents followed by $1.11, followed by $1.33, going forward to $1.73, and then, of course, he got a little bit further to $2.24, and then your $2.74, and the list keep, keeps going on, $3.32. Now, the question comes, Ed, what do you think is going to happen here? Well, from everything we've seen today, I think that it is not a matter of when, I'm uh, sorry, if, but more of when SNDL will expand to the US market. It has a massive amount of capital, a massive amount of backing. 
institutional backends. Uh, they're buying out massive companies or massive selections of companies like we just saw today uh, with the news I gave you today. And so it is relating towards legislations being passed in the U.S. that would allow them to do so and trade as well or uh, basically sell marijuana at a profitable rate at a corporate setting. And so I do think that it is probably something to very much keep an eye on for the next two years. Nonetheless, you will continue to get volatility here and there. And I think this is one of the stocks that you're going to look at in two, three years, and you're going to be surprised from what you see. But it is a high risk play. But I'm a very much of a believer on this one. What do you think about the sticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like, and have a wonderful day. Now, if you made it this far into the video, I do recommend that you go ahead and join our Discord server. There's a lot of amazing folks in here. Uh, we do a lot of discussions here into the trading floor throughout the day. A lot of people are in there and we do ask questions. You can ask me uh, any question you would like on there. Uh, we do post research and DDs and we hold weekly uh, chat sessions. And we also do have a lounge in there. So make sure to actually join that and join the fun there. Have a wonderful day and a good one.